Hey everybody. Today we're talking about the log normal distribution. This is a really common and important distribution used to model phenomena where only positive values are possible and observations can and do differ by several degrees of magnitude. Basically what's going on here is that if your random variable has a log normal distribution, then its log has a normal distribution. Now the base of the logarithm doesn't matter. The natural logarithm is most standard when you're doing the mathematical calculations, as you'll see me do a little bit of later on. Lots and lots of real world phenomena can be modeled with a log normal distribution. Here's just a few examples. Home prices, numbers of moves in games of chess, links of comments to YouTube videos, household incomes, population sizes. In every one of these cases, you've only got positive values and the, um, the sizes of the observations you're going to get could differ by several orders of magnitude. Before we do any math, and I'll keep the math to a minimum, and before we do any code, let's just run through a little bit of an example to try and build some intuition here. I'm thinking about the college data set, which is included in the ISLR2R package. Um, and most of the variables in that set can be modeled with a log normal distribution. Let's focus in on the accept variable that represents the number of students accepted, I think it was in 1993, at something like 777 US colleges. If you plot a histogram of those acceptance numbers, you get this. Most of the values are in the hundreds or thousands, but you do have a few that are in the single or double digits and a few that are upwards of 10,000, so um, a handful that get pretty big. You can see the normality that actually exists in this distribution, I think most clearly, if you just make a table with the number of digits that are actually in those acceptance numbers. And just looking at this, you can already kind of see that bell shape. You see the symmetry and you also see the tails. You see that for that schools with two or five digits in their enrollment totals, there's only two and 16 respectively, while you've got similar counts for three and four, um, similar to one another that are much larger than those um, counts for two and five. Here's what the histogram of the base 10 logarithms of those acceptance counts look like. In this case, I've decided to use a base 10 logarithm rather than a natural logarithm because it's a little bit more easy to interpret, at least for the layman. So when I see 3.0, that's 10 to the third or 1,000. And when I see 4.0, that's 10 to the fourth or 10,000. So really what we're plotting here is sort of the scale of the variable, the overall size of the school, not just the raw number, but the overall sort of scale of the school. Here you can definitely see a bell shape. All right, let's get into the log normal distribution a slightly bit more mathematically. I promise I won't go too hard on the math. It's defined by two parameters, just like the normal distribution itself, mu and sigma squared. Now, those are not the mean and variance of the log normal distribution, but rather the mean and variance of the corresponding normal distribution, the one that you get when you take the natural logarithm of all the observations that you've got. Here's the notation. We just write log normal mu comma sigma squared with a random variable for that distribution. Now, if you do need the mean and variance of the log normal distribution itself, and there are formulas for that, here they are, but you should bear in mind that these are not going to be particularly representative of the center and spread of, those distribu of this distribution simply because there's so much skew to that distribution. When we're calculating probabilities in a log normal distribution, basically what we're going to do is take the log and then do normal calculations. So I'll run through that kind of quickly. Here I've written the probability that x is less than or equal to some specified value, little x, taken logs of both sides of that inequality. Log is an increasing function, so that um, preserves the inequality. And now since I have a natural log on the left, I can just um, do a normal calculation. So calling ln of x y, y is going to have a normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma squared. So now we're talking about a CDF, a cumulative distribution function. I have thrown the cumulative distribution function for the normal distribution down at the bottom. You can get the cumulative distribution function for the log normal just by replacing x with ln x in that expression. I won't talk about that too much. If you want the probability density function, 
you just differentiate that whole thing with respect to x. So here's the PDF of a log normal random variable. As with any continuous random variable, we can compute probabilities by integrating if we are really fe feeling psychotic or really if we need to do more theoretical calculations. But in the real world, in this day and age, we use technology if we do need to do probability calculations here. I use R, and so in R, the code for the cumulative distribution function of the log normal distribution is PL norm. You have to specify, specify both the mean and standard deviation of the corresponding normal distribution in that PL norm, as well as, of course, the value you're interested in. So notice that PL norm wants a standard deviation, not a variance, sigma, not sigma squared. So the expression you're seeing at the bottom to get the probability between A and B is taking the probability that X is less than or equal to B and subtracting off the probability that X is less than or equal to A standard calculation using cumulative normal distributions, excuse me, cumulative distribution functions. As you would hope, you can estimate your parameters of a log normal distribution from data. I won't do any of the theory here, but I will give you the formulas for the maximum likelihood estimators, the MLEs for mu and sigma squared in the log normal distribution. And they're kind of what you would expect. For instance, mu hat is just one over n, times the sum of all the logs of the xi's, so basically the average of the logs of the xi's. And this is, I think, very intuitive when you think about the log of x having a normal distribution. Now, just like with the normal distribution, that maximum likelihood estimator for sigma hat squared is biased. It's gonna, on average, slightly underestimate the parameter sigma squared. And so when you're actually trying to get an estimate for sigma squared, for that variance for the population, the normal thing to do is to do a little correction. Instead of having the denominator of n, have a denominator of n minus one. That gives you an unbiased estimator for that population variance of that underlying um, normal distribution. Let's wrap up with a quick example of that. I'm looking at the college data set again from the ISLR2 package. This time I'm going to look at the enroll variable, freshman undergraduate enrollments. And I'm looking at a sample of size eight from that set. Here are the undergrad, freshman undergraduate enrollments at those schools. And you can see they're all positive. The smallest is about 97, the larger, largest is about 2408. So even just in this small sample, you can really see that the data differs by several orders of magnitude. Here are the computations for mu hat and sigma squared hat. I've used the unbiased estimator. And my estimator for the population mean for the logarithm of that variable is 6.05. My estimator for the, stand, for the variance of the logarithm of that variable is 1.01. If you use the formulas from five or six slides ago, then you can calculate that these correspond to a mean for um, undergraduate enrollment, freshman undergraduate enrollment of 701.5 and standard deviation of 922.2. But once again, you need to bear in mind that these numbers might not be very representative of the center and spread of that distribution just because those distributions are so skewed. By the way, the actual parameters in the college data set are mu equals 6.18 and sigma equals 0.91. So in this case, they're not too far off.